this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I'm going to speak about what is the effect of form on GZ curve. Like for a given ship, if we just change the freeboard, what happens to the GZ curve? If we just change the draft, what happens to the GZ curve? If we change the uh, uh, beam of the vessel, what happens to the GZ curve? If we shift the position of center of gravity, what happens to the GZ curve? In our maritime career, we go on different types of ships. Like we should know certain basic things. Like for example, for a box vessel, the BM is given by B square upon 12D. That means there is a relationship between B and D that influences the BM and therefore the metacentric height of the vessel. Like for a box vessel, suppose this is B, this is keel. The position of metacenter how high is meta center with respect to B is given by this relationship for a box vessel. Even uh, for a ship shaped vessel, if it is not precisely B square upon 12D, B plays a very important role. B in relation to the draft of the vessel is very important in deciding the BM and therefore the GM of the vessel. So, uh, if you see a similar ship like uh, considering the drafts and other parameters, the length etc. Uh, same, a uh, ship that has got a wider beam will be more stiff because the metacentric height will be better. right? Compared to a ship which is narrow, the narrow ship, the narrower ship will be more comfortable to sail on because uh, it generally will not show up uh, uh, a stiff GM. Suppose we uh, conduct an experiment on a box vessel and what happens if we change the beam? We don't change the draft, we don't change anything, just the beam is increased. Because the beam is increased, what will happen is the BM, that is the distance between center of buoyancy and meta center will increase. right? And if the BM increases, the GM increases. And if the GM increases, what happens to the GZ curve? Suppose this was the original GZ curve. After increase of beam, what will happen is the curve would, instead of initially going this direction, would go in a direction higher than the original curve. This is because uh, the slope at the initial part indicates the GM at 57.3 degrees, we know that, at 57.3 degrees, this is the GM of original ship, this is the GM of the new ship. So what happens is, uh, when we increase the B beam, we find that there is some difference that is caused to the curve. The position of maximum GZ would occur a little later and the range of positive stability, range of stability will slightly increase. There is a slight increase of the overall area of the curve. So uh, we can generally say that if this was the original GZ curve, after increasing the BM, the curve becomes like this. So this was the effect of increase of beam of the vessel, right? We may say that this is curve A and this is curve B. Now let us see what happens if we increase the freeboard of the vessel without changing the draft. Let the draft remain same and we will increase the freeboard. So uh, if this is the original freeboard and what we do is we increase, we just increase the freeboard. We don't do anything else. We don't uh, touch the draft. Assuming that the draft remains same, uh, the shape of the ship is same, you know, just the freeboard is increased. So what happens is, there is a larger angle at which the freeboard uh, would vanish. That means a deck is immersion will take place at a larger angle. And as we know about the GZ curve, you know, initially the curve is concave in nature and subsequently the curve becomes convex in nature. And this is called point of contraflexion. And this point of contraflexion is associated with a point or an angle at which deck as immersion takes place. 
So you've seen initially for the initial freeboard, this was the deck as immersion angle. And uh, now the deck as immersion angle has increased, which means that if we increase the freeboard, the point of contraflexure is going to be at a, a later angle, right? Compared to the curve A, where the point of contraflexure is somewhere here, if we increase the freeboard, we are going to get a curve whereby contra, point of contraflexure is going to be. Uh, uh, shifted to a higher angle. Now the thing is what will not change if we do not change the beam? If we do not change the beam and draft what is not going to change is the BM and therefore the metacentric height and therefore the initial slope. So if we just increase the freeboard what will happen is the initial slope of the curve is not going to change. And what is going to happen is there is going to be subsequent very significant modification in the size of the curve in range of uh, positive stability because the GM is same the initial slope or initial run of the curve is same but there is subsequent uh, rise in the maximum GZ the angle at which the maximum GZ would occur and the angle of vanishing stability. So there is a significant uh, improvement in the size of curve but the initial part of the curve is same. Whereas if we had increased the beam of the vessel what happens is because the beam is increased looking at this formula the GM increases and because the GM increases at inclination what happens is there is a larger difference between the center of gravity and center of buoyancy which means that GZ would increase at every other angle right at every angle of heel the GZ would increase the maximum GZ would occur maximum GZ you can see in the curve B occurs at a later angle right there is general improvement of the size but not so significant and the range of positive stability once again not so significant but if we increase the freeboard what happens is the deck has immersion angle therefore the point of counterflexure shifts uh, uh, to a, a higher angle and there is considerable uh, increase in the size of curve and there is considerable increase in the range of stability range of positive stability or the uh, vanishing angle of stability. Now considering that we are looking at this vessel uh, where the freeboard is so much increased so much and we are looking at this curve let's call this curve as curve C. Now what happens if we in this situation shift the weight vertically upwards so when we shift the weight upwards what happens is the metacentric height decreases gm would reduce and when gm reduces it means that at any angle of heel the transverse distance between center of gravity and center of buoyancy would reduce if we see an inclined vessel as we know b shifts in the direction of the wedges and suppose this is center of gravity of the vessel, this is center of buoyancy, here is the writing lever. So uh, when the metacentric height, when the metacentric height is reduced, that means uh, uh, this distance GM reduces, this GM reduces because we have shifted a weight vertically upwards. When metacentric height reduces, you can see that the transverse distance between the center of buoyancy and center of gravity would also reduce. It means that at every angle of heel, the GZ will reduce. So that is what happens. Uh, the initial slope of the curve is low because the GM is reduced and the vertical height that is the writing lever at different angles of uh, heel will also be low, right? And the GZ curve will take a shape like this this I call a curve D. So this curve D will have reduced writing levers at different angles of heel and reduced GM. So this is what is the effect of form. 
and effect of shifting the weights internally on the GZ curve.